Hello and welcome to an uh, new year of Indie Radio. This is the second annual Indie Radio 24 hour podcast. Yes, I said it 24 hours. Now, before you guys get excited and you go, wow, I get 24 hours straight of Kente Ferguson. Yeah, I know. Me, maybe. <laughs> I don't I, I hate to like disappoint people because I know you guys you guys all love me and you're about to hear an echo. To an Sorry about to hear an echo. New year. You're about to hear an echo, my bad. Now, I know you guys are excited. You're like, man, twenty four hours straight of Kente, that's amazing, right? Well, it's not gonna be straight twenty four hours, okay? Um I'm gonna be on here quite a bit. I'm gonna pop off. You're gonna see Shannon a lot you're gonna see uh uh olaf you're gonna see jen right they're all gonna be there for your entertainment okay <laughs> entertainment for your entertainment okay? for your pleasure for your pleasure <laughs> okay so, so for your dark for your dartboard later you know you take the picture and then you put it on the dartboard and have at it that's right <laughs> now i gotta say this let me see. Uh, um, we are simulcasting or multicasting on different platforms. We are on Facebook. Uh, we are on uh, YouTube. And we're also on Periscope. We are also on Get Vocal. That's the main room that will be open. You can stay in this room the whole 24 hours and check us out. You can. I see a lot of people on, on um, Facebook as well. What's up to everybody? Uh, I'm gonna try to relay everything that people are saying to the audience. Uh, I mean, into the panel and to the rest of the audience. I can see everywhere where we're at. So pretty cool. Now this is the first podcast that I'm doing for 2020. Even though Jen tried to get me to end the hiatus early, and I almost did. Uh, didn't I didn't. Quite I didn't do My it. Hours of persuasion are not as strong. Right, right. But um. All right, so let's do this. Um, it is a new year, 2020. It's a new decade. Can you believe that? It's a it new is. decade. Um, it's also uh, the Olympics is this year, right? Yep, Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo. You also got, we're going to have a new president, maybe, this year. <laughs> we're going to have a new president. Uh yep. We are. What's up, Michael? In the chat. Um, we make it. We there's a lot of stuff popping off in 2020. The Lakers are going to win the championship this year. Oh, high goals, high lofty goals. The um, Giants are going to win at least two football games this year. Hey. Oh. Yep. I'm predicting it. At claim least it. Two. Claim it. Claim it. Claim it. <laughs> All right. So a lot of stuff is about to pop off. Maya's in the chat. What's up, Maya? Bobby Hi, Maya. says UFOs. We're going to see a UFO this year, possibly. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff popping off this year. Okay. Yep. But before we talk about what's going to happen in 2020, let's kind of go back over 2019. Now, what? Let's talk about last month, how Kente forgot uh, my birthday. You know what? I, I'm beat myself up about that. You know, I actually, I bought a flogger and every morning I beat myself with it just because I'm, I feel terrible about forgetting your birthday. You I, should I, feel terrible. You know, What's we, up, we, Ramsey? We and really don't want to hear song? about your personal stuff, dude. The mystery of Oak Once Island will be solved this year. Your is your business, man. Hey, look, I was wrong. I did her wrong. I'm sorry, Shannon. I'm going to tattoo your birthday on my on my uh, stomach. Did he at least send you flowers afterwards? No, he didn't oh. do anything, Chen. Oh, no. You well, listen, you, you're already a head up again uh, from me. I'm writing a book. I don't get anything either. And he promised me that we would watch burnt offerings. 
on my birthday every year. And this year went by and no burnt offerings. No burnt offerings, huh? See? It sounds like he needs to give up some burnt offerings. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty crushed. Okay, so 2019, right? It actually started with uh, our first 24 hour pro- program, did very well. Um, and then I felt like this year we did a lot of great stuff with podcasting. Um, we did a lot of cool stuff. We actually, y'all, I met Shannon in person. I met Shannon in person and she ignored me the whole time, but it's okay. Life. It, it's Life. okay. Life. <laughs> it's okay. You know, like Life. I was so glad to see Shannon. I was like, yay, Shannon. And Shannon was just like, who are you? I sat next, nah, I sat next to him while we played, what did we play? Domino's? You are Domino's. lying. Come Domino's. <laughs> And look, we went to breakfast the next... Wait, that sounds... Wait, pause. We all, as a group, went to breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people remixing what happened. We all went to a group at breakfast. She ignored me at breakfast. I didn't know it! You Aww. know. But it's all good, though. You know? You know, I cried. <laughs> I won that life in 2019. He sat so. at another table across from me. Hey, table. I did not ignore him. I just had three other people at my table, as did he. I said at the kids' which table. Which we had to entertain the people at our table, did we not? Uh, No, you could have came over and been like, you know what? I'm going to eat this omelet next to you. Came over where? Sat on your kneecap? You could have <laughs> asked Marty. You could have asked Marty, hey, can, I, can we switch seats? Because I really need to, my co-host, I really need to spend some time, you know, but no, you didn't do that. But thank God Maddie was there. Maddie was very sweet. She she consoled me. She's like, don't worry, Shannon is just like that. So, <laughs> so, so Yeah, uh, I'm rude. I'm a rude girl. Yeah, so, that's me. I was like, oh, wow, she's just going to ignore me the whole time. But that's all good. He's from consistent. And then, check this out. I love her dog, right? Her dog uh, and me. Here we go. Here we go. Her dog and me are like tight. She wouldn't no, let me. She wouldn't let me pet the dog. <laughs> she kept the dog in a cage. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, let the dog out. He's a, she's like he's he sleep. The dog was clearly awake. He was wide ass awake. See that? He's wide awake now. See, and he was mad about that because he wanted to hang out with a brother. You know. Aww. So, but no, it's I all mean, good. I mean, for anybody that can't see this, this dog is actually really adorable. Very adorable. Just absolutely cute. And he, he, hey, looked, he looked even more adorable in his cage. He had the little sad <laughs> it's eyes. It's called a kennel. It's a kennel. Kennel my it ass. It was a dog bag, airproof, okay. approved for the it airport. A, Do not start. It was a, gu- it it was a Gucci cage. You're wrong. <laughs> That's what it was. It looked like some Gu- a Gucci cage. Hey, baby. But it's okay though. I love Shannon anyway. My my first novel is gonna be called um uh what is it called uh, for the love of Shannon? Wait, what was it? I forgot. Lies, lies. <laughs> These lies you tell. <laughs> So I thought the I thought the novel was gonna be uncaged the dog. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> Please let the dogs out. I mean, it's gonna be a remix to unbreak my heart in a minute, you little liar. <laughs> but uh like I said, hey, what's up, Sybil? Sybil's on uh, Periscope checking us out as well. Hey Sybil. So uh but um no, but look. Sit down. So it Sit was down. it was a great year. Um I met Yardley too for the first time in person. Yeah, oh, right. that voice is everything that's in right. person. Yardley, you know, Yardley, you know, cool cat, and uh, Olaf has met him many times in person. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yardley's like, great to hang around with. Um, I also, of course, I met Madi in person. Uh, Tiffany was there. I met her in person. That was pretty cool. Um, my boo. My uh, boo. Anthony as well. Anthony was cool as well. He was there. My brother. You know, so it was cool. I didn't. I got to call out some people in Atlanta. Didn't see Dante, but you saw Audrey and Kim Kim. I saw Audrey and Kim Kim. They were very sweet, <laughs> very sweet. But I didn't see Dante. You know, I was a little hurt. 
<laughs> Let me stop. I was like, it's Dante. What did you expect? I, you know, I thought I thought he would, you know, pop through, you know. But no, 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 Dante. He was at home pining over the fact that Stephanie didn't show. Yeah. He was in mourning. Yeah, well, no Dante. But it's all good, man. I, You know, I... I you know, I'm sure he had a good reason for not coming through. I just told you what it was. Yeah, all right. We'll we'll go with that. <laughs> um. Okay, so that was 2019. 2020 is gonna be huge. I got a lot of stuff popping. I know Shannon got a lot of stuff popping. I know Jen got a lot of stuff popping. Olaf always got something popping. <laughs> I'm not gonna repeat that, Mike. Uh, but, uh, what? Let me hear it, Mike. What'd you say? <laughs> he, he, uh, called, uh, Dante something. Uh, uh, but, um, but no, I, I'm very excited. I'm very happy. Um, hopefully I get a chance to meet more of you guys in person and I'm just looking forward to this year. So, um, before I continue on with 2020, uh, I just want to give everybody a rundown of how tonight's going to go. Uh, every show is going to be in an hour or well, really 55 minute block or an hour and 55 minute block. So it'll be five minutes in between shows. Um, the get vocal room will stay open the whole time. So you don't have to switch rooms. Um, but stream yards, we, we will have to go from one to the next to, you know, and we have like five minutes to get that thing going. So, um, so I'm, there's people that they have shows that they're going to do. And, mm -hmm. and then there's uh there's people who um, are going to um, come on shows that we just kind of put together for this uh, event. Oops. Uh oh, this is covering up the thing. My little thing right there. Um, so uh, it's going to be fun. Um, let me I'm trying to bring up the uh, actual list just so that I can give people a little rundown of what, what's popping. Okay, so um, this is the opening show. We're gonna, um, you know, we're gonna kick it off. We'll be on for two hours. Then after that, we have a show uh, with our, our guest is uh, Alan Newman Jr. and Q Vergara. And me and Shannon is gonna enter, uh, do a show called Closing the Deal. Um, then after that, we're going to have uh, Stephanie and Q. Um, they're going to come on and they're going to do a show uh, with us. Uh, then we're going to do a special episode of The Spotlight with Josh, uh, Lauren, and uh, Jen. And then this will be my first time after that to take a break because uh, Jen and Josh is going to do a show uh, at 2 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and then after that, uh, Brooklyn and me and Shannon is going to do a show. Uh, L.A. Wade is after that. Andre Harrison's coming in. Hey, Norma. What's up, Norma? Uh, Ramsey's doing a show after that. And then that's the 12-hour mark. Then we got Ebony Empress, Aaron Grig or Riggs uh, is doing a show. And then uh, after that, we, we're going to have uh, S.J., and Ava Laura and Dr. Amira, Crystal Tucker. After that, Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Leah, the life coach. Then Dr. Vibe is going to do a two hour show. Grayson. And then Shannon will be doing two, two hour shows leading up to the big closeout show. Uh, one with uh, Wait, Tracy. Two? Yeah. Remember you're doing one with Tracy J and then. No, one. but two, two hours. So no, four no, hours. No, 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 no. Two, one hour. So it's two hours. Total. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, so that's what's popping for today. I see, man, I see Maya, I see Stephanie, I see Madi, Ramsey, uh, I see uh, Ryan. Oh, wait, I, I said Ryan already, huh? Norma, uh, also in the Get Vocal, I see Mike, Bobby, Leah, the life coach, Brooklyn, uh, Jen, Anthony Davis. I haven't seen Anthony in a minute. And then, of course, we have Sybil. And uh, as well as others in uh, the Periscope. So if you have a question, you know, feel free to uh, to put it in there. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, Madeline's supposed to be joining us. Uh, um, let me check on what's going on with Madeline. Uh, she, she got the time mixed up. Uh, so I'm going to send, make sure she has the link. Uh, and hopefully we can go. And uh, Norma saying hi to us. All right. So uh, I was going to try to wait for Madeline, but no, we'll just do our thing. Okay. Let's so do our thing. Okay, so in 2020, I decided that, you know, I have a lot of stuff going on, right? Okay. And one thing, you know, as a busy person who does a lot of stuff, one thing we don't do is self-care a lot, right? Because uh, it's all about go, 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 right? And you guys all probably fit into that box, right? So what I said to myself, you know what I'm going to do this year? In between the grind, I'm going to relax, too. I'm going to yep. do stuff that's purely relaxing, that is purely meditational, that's purely just chill. Now, last uh, was it last year, the year before, I went to this um, day spa, and I ain't like a day spa dude, you know? And I'm telling you, that was w wonderful. Spending that whole day there, relaxing. You know, I didn't get in the mud. I should have gotten the mud. Next time I'm getting in the mud, y'all. But being in the the um, you know the uh, the 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 water with the with the um, what do you call it, the, the hot springs and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Man, I needed that so bad. I need to do that like. Yeah, he said I should get in the mud. Um, yep, you um, should. I should. You know what? I think I might do that once a month at least. You know, I really need to do that. I honestly, real talk. I'm thinking about as well getting a a regular massage, professional massage, not not a. a not a uh you know one of those uh little shops <laughs> you know uh you know that with the happy ending uh but no like like a uh a, a, a weekly massage deep tissue deep, a deep tissue, tissue or massage. a biweekly yeah uh, or at least a biweekly you know what it's worth it like it's worth it you feel really good afterwards has anybody in this chat had a professional massage mm -hmm. press 1 in the chat and Okay, so Jen, what does it do for you when you get a, get that massage? No, oh, it's hard to even explain. It's it, you know you know what it is. <clears throat> Unless you've actually had uh, a massage that like really gets into your tissue, it is difficult to equate it with anything else. But when it's over, <clears throat> it's not just that you feel relaxed physically; it's that you feel mentally relaxed. Mm. It's a, it's quite amazing, actually. Mm. Also, there's a huge yeah, difference. I, have, I, between... I get it done a lot. Mm. <laughs> there's a huge I get it difference. done. I get it done a lot too, uh, Olaf. <laughs> but, well, it's like I for a while, I've got problems with my back and my shoulder and stuff like that. So, it's like my chiropractor actually has a massage therapist uh, there on on staff, and a lot of times I'll get uh, it's like she'll uh, you know come in and work on my shoulder. or my lower back and it just it loosens it up to where I can actually move again so it's like I I, I it's like I I like a good it's like a good good massage every once in a while I'm kind of like you guys like th thinking this year maybe I might try to do that a little bit more yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. it can definitely be dang, I mean I, I don't I don't think I'm overstating it uh, life changing you know especially when you, you, you get it on a regular right hmm it's the right person it's the right person and it yep. takes a little while. Like you need to shop around a bit because everybody has kind of a, a different technique and they have different pressures. And uh -huh. when you find the right person, you know it. You're you'll feel it. You'll feel zen for the rest of the day. Uh -huh. Now, Mike in the chat says, "Get a Moroccan, a Moroccan bath, then a deep deep tissue." Man, that sounds good. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm deep, right. deep tissue can be a little bit painful if you're not used to it. I wouldn't start with that. I would start with something a little bit lighter. Yeah, right. like the... move into that. Yeah. 
Deep right. tissue yeah, is not for the faint of like heart. A, no, it's really. That's like I always <laughs> kid with my. It's like with the. It's like with the gal. It's like gal that does the massage therapy on me. I always tell her it's like you know I I think she came from like you know the military cook, and must have worked in military intelligence because. When she starts working on me, it's like all I'm gonna do is crawl off that table because she is, she gets to digging in there, and boy, I tell you what, deep tissue will make you. It's like will wake you up quick, but it feels really good when they stop. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, you ever have somebody try to give you a massage, and they try oh, to yeah. do some kind of deep tissue type thing, and it's like no, <laughs> no, it's, yeah. more, it's more like a deep pain in your back <laughs> instead of. A, <laughs> Like, you know, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got Madeline. I made it. All right, Madeline. I'm finally here. Hey, Madeline. Hello. What's up? What's up, y'all? Where did I, where? Okay. So what we're talking about right now, I'm talking. I like how we're both rocking the headscarves right now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What what we're talking about right now, Madeline, is um, I'm saying that in 2020, I'm going to do a better job at self-care. And Uh, and I was talking about I want to get a regular mm -hmm. uh, professional massage. And we were talking about our experiences getting professional massages. Uh, uh, Have you I'm going to imagine you probably had them, right? Yeah, you know what? I just had a massage. And uh, it was after I did a boxing commercial, and uh, it felt like I was getting my ass beat. It felt like I was getting my ass kicked. All my muscles were, like, so sore and tight. Like, I literally yelled and screamed the whole time. I think they thought I was getting killed in massage envy. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It was bad. It was bad. It was all up through here. It It sounded like corn pops. Like it was bad. Oh no! <laughs> but it felt really good afterwards. So you know, getting my ass kicked a little bit was fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you get them on a regular basis, though, it doesn't. It's not as bad. In other words, when your muscles are all real tight and everything, it's it is hard. It is it is tough when you get a massage when you're really tense. Uh-huh. You, you know, if you have if, if you have a couple of them or start getting them on a regular basis, then they feel really good. Hey, Norma. Yeah. Team Norma. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, and I've I've had it, and I don't know why, though, like, I don't do it more. I can do it, you know. I don't know. You feel like you're, I don't know. Sometimes you feel like you're so busy that you can't do these things. And you know what? You can make time, you know, like, and I, I think I want to do that on a regular basis. And I think that definitely. You kind of should make time. Right. For sure. Amen. Yeah, so that's something that I want to do in 2020 is do that kind of stuff. Now, sometimes one thing that I appreciate is a good nap, right? It is something glorious about a good nap. And I don't know if you've ever done this where you're not at, you're not at home and you're thinking about the nap when you get home like <laughs> you know you're like oh it's gonna be epic you know <laughs> like like i can't yep. wait <laughs> and then do you ever like set the mood for your nap yep <laughs> like those are things that especially now i like the nap where you wake up and you don't know what year it is <laughs> <laughs> that's some rip van winkle stuff going on right there like that's it, intense like i'm 43 right so i just turned 43 And the last so many years, I definitely have a new uh, found love for taking a good nap. You know, I just feel like naps are for weak people, though. I know I shouldn't. (laughs) I always feel like, oh, my God, what is wrong with me that I'm not strong enough to stay awake all day? When did I graduate back into preschool? Man, a nap will change your life. It'll save you. It'll save somebody else's. Right. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you have I like, kids. I like taking naps. Yeah, you know, and I naps like... are actually super healthy for your brain. Right. Naps are super healthy for your brain. You're only supposed to really focus on something for about 45 right. minutes, and then you're supposed to take a break equal to 45 minutes. Okay, so so I'm going to ask you guys all a question then. How many hours a night 
do you actually sleep? I'll be at work at night, so that's consecutively. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. How many? So how many hours of consecutive sleep do you get when you go to bed? Oh, when I actually close my eyes and stay asleep. Yep. <laughs> Maybe six. Mike says seven to eight. Uh, Anthony Maybe Davis six. says he can't function without a 45 minute nap. I would say I'm like a faux fo faux three, something like that. Three fo. So is that when you get up and go to the bathroom and then go back to sleep? <clears throat> yep. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm that. I am that. I don't know. That. So I get, I do oh, about okay. three to three to four okay. hours, and I, then I'm up for about an hour, and then I go back to bed, and then I'm up for you know, like three or four hours. But I, I take mm-hmm. naps. Uh, you know, I, I, I like taking naps. I take naps when I'm driving. You know, you ever be so when you're driving? When you're yeah, yeah. It's like I'm a, just gonna comment uh, on that. I take little. I take little quick naps, you know. It's like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not going to ride with you. I know you. I need to wake up when I start hearing horns blowing. I'm like, oh, this is my. Well, off. if you got a Tesla, you good though. Ola. You can do that in the Tesla. Ola, <laughs> could you uh, could you give me your schedule just so that I know when to not oh, be wow. on the road? Uh, that, that part. Be good. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm sorry, you, you broke up, Jen. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> can you just give me your schedule? Give me your schedule so I can know when not to do it. You know, in cars. Of- no, go ahead. I'm sorry, Madeline. Oh, okay. I guess I think there's a little delay with Mad- Madeline, so we got to uh, definitely remember that when when we're doing the thing. But um, yeah. So like me though, I have this thing. I don't like to be woken up out of my sleep. So, me neither. So like, I mean, look. If the house is on fire, by all means, break my rule. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. But, uh, but no, I don't like to be woken up, and especially if it's on some dumb stuff, like uh-huh. something that could have waited till I woke up. You know, you know, like you know, something like, uh, uh, did you know uh, avocados are on sale? Like, really? <laughs> that sounds like something one of my kids would do. <laughs> like if it's something like that, you might get you might get smacked. Yeah. <laughs> For that, you know, you know, that's that's the one beauty part about being retired. I wake up when I want to wake up. <laughs> mm-hmm. That part, Ugh, I wish. Yeah, that's so- how I feel about being self-employed. So pretty nice yeah mm-hmm. so that's the uh, that's one advantage of being well, retired I wake up when i want okay. to and go to bed when i want to so. the, the the reason that i asked is because i downloaded at the beginning of last year this thing that's called this it's huh? a sleep app and you sit on your bed and yeah. you know it tells oh, you how long you slept in the night and whether you tossed and turned and all that good stuff and I went back to look at my sleep app at the end of uh, the year, and I was actually really surprised. Not only that I only sleep for between, you know, five and six hours a night, but also that the the times that I, you can clearly see the times that you're actually awake. And I clearly don't sleep very well. So I think that's what I need to do this year for self-care. Okay. I, think I need to figure out why in the world I'm not sleeping. I started thinking, you know, alien invasions or something. Probably not. It's probably just one of my kids well, tapping on the door. The other reason I don't, that's mm-hmm. the other reason I don't sleep well is because I have sleep apnea. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me that the aliens come to your house too, because then we could have a really good show. Duh. Yeah. No, they, they don't, <laughs> they, they just, they just stop in, visit for a minute and go on. So they don't bother. As long as they don't, they're not probing you. They're probably yeah, well, asking directions from my we, house. Hey, we we uh, we're not going there. We ain't going. We ain't going that way. You just leave that alone. You go back to your. No, 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 no. Okay, leave, okay. Leave so, so, so I have an alien story, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody told me a story about how when they were a kid, they believed that they were abducted. They said they woke up and there was a strange, like, grid pattern on their side. Oh. And I was like, oh, wow, that's some crazy shit. And then I looked it up, and I and other people said that they bo- all woke up with the same three-grid pattern on their bodies. 
and they were all from like rural areas. I mean, they were super white people, but it was like a lot of different people were saying the same thing about this three inch, three by three grid on their side. And they all believed that they were abducted by aliens. Wow. That's some spooky shit I found out about alien abductions. <laughs> no, I, I did. I did that. I did that just to freak, with, just to mess with them. <laughs> well, clearly, clearly your master plan worked because it's a bunch of white people out there that are pretty scared right now about aliens. <laughs> just saying, just saying. There is actually, I mean, there's whole books about it. There's whole movies about it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't actually believe in that stuff. I mean, it's funny to talk about. It's funny to joke about. I don't actually believe it, but I cannot watch those movies. They scare me to death. But I don't, I swear, I don't believe it. I don't have any idea why it's so scary. But uh, also, the, you know, the point that I was making was the reason that you don't sleep is generally tied to some, like Olaf was saying, you know, sleep apnea or something uh, when we're talking about how to self-care. Man, that one seems yeah. like a no-brainer. Um, just so that I want to get people used to this, I'm going to be on for 24 hours. So I'm probably going to be eating uh, <laughs> during this. So I just want to get y'all used to that. But um, yeah. so, uh, but anyway, uh, aliens. I used to totally be aliens. a believer. I used to be such a believer, man. Aliens. I'm scared of I'm, I'm I hate that whole topic. It, I, it, it, it's weird how much it scares me. Just so little actually scares me. And that particular topic actually really makes me uncomfortable. Mm. I, I used to be a big believer, but I don't know. I don't believe Aliens. as much as like I used to. A though. big believer Aliens. of what? Aliens got me. Uh, I believe that there was uh, extraterrestrials out there and they was, you know, we had made contact and all of that stuff. I, I was, the truth was out there for me. So... Now I'm like, yeah, I need the proof. Well, it's because the X Files ended, so I think that was it. Yeah, Somebody in Mulder the chat, Scully. <laughs> it's kind of hard to believe. Yo, 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 what's up in the chat? Um, but um, yeah, I was a big time believer, but I'm not now. So I need more. Aliens don't exist. They really are. A, a, a real, they are really demons. I, I've, I've heard that one too. Yeah. So. I don't know, man. Wait, wait, aliens when don't was, exist, but demons do? What? I know. Now, when I was a lot, when I was sorry, a lot younger, sorry, I'm I allowed, to like... aliens. I said, when I was a lot younger, when I used to believe in aliens, I was pretty sure my brother was one. <laughs> <laughs> but see, but see, that that's a good, that's a really good point, right? It's we've now attributed so much to that pop culture piece of oh, it must be aliens, that now it's like every, and I feel the same way about the whole demon thing, too. It's like, oh, everything must be demons. And I, get, I mean, come on, not everything can be everything. It's so ridiculous. But aren't there some things that actually, like, make your when somebody starts talking about it, you get goosebumps and stuff? And it's not because you believe it. It's not because you're, you know, actively running away from something. But don't, aren't there certain topics that just make you go, uh-uh, no, no, no. Well, now, now I believe in demons because I've seen I demons. Do. I've seen demons. It's like when, just like my kids were when my kids were young, they were demons. They <laughs> I, knew I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Um, I, I got, I got two, I got two daughters, and they were just demons. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to name one Sage Olaf. That's the problem. Mm. They, okay. like I tried. Hey, now I tried. I tried burn sage one time to kind of you know calm them down, and I started to. I was starting to burn it. They ate it. <laughs> but the, really, there, they there's, ate it. There, there's, there's nothing that makes you guys that makes you guys like sort of, I don't know, just really uncomfortable. Uh, dead silence on a date. Oh, um, body odor. But wait a minute, those aren't okay. All right, I guess maybe I asked for that. I asked the question. Cujo. No, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> okay, so let me ask this question. Uh, we'll start off with Madeline. Um, okay. Okay, so you you don't live in L.A. right now, right? Unfortunately, no. Okay, so 
you got the deal of a century. It's a house. And it's 75% mm-hmm. under the value, but it's a bomb ass house. Your dream house in the city. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> Cujo, hilarious. Um, right? And you'll be living in LA, basically paying damn near nothing. But the one problem is like mm-hmm. eight people got murdered in the house. That's why people ain't buying it. And it might oh. it might just be haunted. Are you taking a deal? I don't give a fuck. I'm taking that shit. <laughs> I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in none of that. I don't care. They better pay some bills if they hanging out in that bitch. <laughs> No, um, like I'm, I'm Creole, and my family practices all of that crap. I ain't scared of nothing. I ain't worried about none of that. Oh, all right, all right. So she's like, I ain't, I ain't scared, scared of no none ghosts. of that. I ain't scared of no ghosts. Okay, what about you, Shannon? You taking a deal? And it's gotta be in L.A. It, wherever you want to be. Oh, because I was like, oh, um, yeah, I would take it. You take the deal? Okay. Hey, Ryan. Hey, what's going on? What about you, Sorry, Ryan? Are you Ryan. taking a deal? What was the deal again? Uh, you have the house of your dreams, 75% <laughs> lower than market value. It's like a steal. The only problem is like eight people got murdered up in that house. Uh, and um, it might be haunted. Put me in the haunted house. <laughs> I know that's right. See, these smart people. All right, all right. What, what yeah, about put me in the haunted house? I'll I'll figure out a way. <laughs> I'll have to, uh, you know, I'll call the Ghostbusters. Whatever I gotta do, I'll start a business. Ghostbusted. All right. Uh, he's, I couldn't tell my wife, but yeah, <laughs> hilarious. Justin makes me feel good. Put put one in the chat, everybody. If you would take the deal. Uh, all right. So what about you, Jen? We'll save Olaf for last. Oh, I I definitely would take it. I don't believe in ghosts either. Hmm. What about you? Oh, it's not that I don't believe in them, but uh, 75% lower than the market value of my dream home? Sign me up. (laughs) The ones. Okay. What about you, uh, Olaf? Are you taking a deal? Would I take the deal? Oh, yeah. I'm scarier than any ghost in that house. I guarantee that. I feel like Olaf is going (laughs) to shoot the ghost. I believe it. Olaf is going to shoot that ghost. Yep. Like, goes, and if I if I can't run, can you I'll pop a cap in a ghost ass? I got friends <laughs> friends who work in the paranormal uh, and and all that stuff, so I I get them out. <laughs> Bob, Bobby says hell f no. Anthony says in Virginia it's a law that you have to tell someone if it was a murder or suicide on in the property. Yeah, yeah, I I, I would take the deal too, and then. You know, who knows? They might be fun, though. They might I mean, be fun. They might, you know, you could play Connect Four with them. That's or... right. Haven't any of you guys seen Casper? Yeah. Like, yep. they, they might be. I mean, it could be like that. He could be a super friendly ghost, or she could be a super friendly ghost. It's not everything has to be the Ouija board. Like, like we did a, a Spotlight episode. Some of y'all might remember it some years back where we had, like, ghost hunters on. I remember that. And this one lady that we had on the show said that she actually hooks up with her um, dead boyfriend. (laughs) Like, this dude actually comes back and breaks her off some sexually from beyond. Oh, Mind you, she got a man. She got a man. It it was a crazy interview. It was so crazy. Everybody should go listen to it. And I'm like this, though. Like, is that cheating, though? Is that cheating? This is too much. It's too much. If, real talk. Real talk. If, if your man Shannon was uh, knocking boots with his uh, <laughs> ex girlfriend who's dead, <laughs> oh, that's just wrong on so many levels. Can you? And this is like this. This is like too close to home. So I'm gonna need you to cut it out. <laughs> Whoa! Like, like oh wow! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, now, I, I, like you know, after the show, I gotta hear about this. But um, yeah, I mean, come on! All right, Ryan, are you jealous? If she or you, yeah, I mean, you gonna let her have her ghost lover? 
No, I'm out. <laughs> I thank you, Ryan. Thank you. I'm out. I'm out. You know, you can do your freaking like, <laughs> like I'm all good with like polyamorous, but like, you know, uh, not plasma and uh, not plasma. Not pl- yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Amorous. Like if she's messing around with Casper, the friendly ghost, I'll be like, <laughs> and and. Is, yeah. I mean, do you still have to use protection though? Can, <laughs> can yeah, you what? You don't want the yeah. entity. You know, he might uh, give some ghost STDs. <laughs> I, I'm, oh, I'm not really Jeez. sure how that works, but I'm, I'm not sure either. Also, this it brings to mind that lady that married the pirate. The uh-huh. the the ghost of the pirate, and then. It, about a year later, there was a huge breakup story about it. And I, I, so, I mean, I'm sure, God bless everybody, they were just doing their thing. But what was funny was the amount of people that were, like, genuinely upset for the poor lady. C- come the on. Ghost it, it, the ghost of a pirate? It's equally as disturbing. Equally as disturbing as the lady who married the doll. Right. Oh, Yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah. So, so oh, Madeline. Oh. So Madeline. Zombie dolls, or just a regular doll. So Madeline. I, honey, I don't even. It's. Oh, it looked like it had been burned alive and put back together. I, it was crazy. So, so, so that yeah yeah. So Madeline. Wow. You have the man of your dreams, and unfortunately, he he is deceased now. But then he oh, comes right. back, and he's like, "Baby, we can still keep this relationship rocking." Oh no. <laughs> He's like, we can still get it popping. Are you gonna? You, gonna, mean, you can't tell him no. Are you gonna tell him no? What his stroke <laughs> game would like? Um. <laughs> well, he's dead. So, we, I mean, there's only there, there's only two ways out of a relationship. You either die or you break up. And he died, so he forfeited it. Time oh, for I new know. dick, new whips, new gifts. <laughs> He'd be like. He'd be like standing over you while you're trying to get it on with somebody else. He's like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> what is this? This is how we started off 2020 with Dad Hey, hey. hey. If, if, he re- if he really knew me, he knew why I, I wouldn't give a fuck if that happened. Oh, uh, really? Let's see. He's like, that's why my soul is in purgatory, because you ain't you ain't messing with me no more. So. I'm mess. So I'm just saying, <laughs> but that's something though. You got to compete with a dead dude. I'm feeling that right now. Be like, man, be you be on um you be on Mari talking about uh her dead ex is a cock blocker. <laughs> That'd be the name of the show. Or something. Six cents. Um, six. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's only a cock block. You're not a freak. <laughs> oh, you gonna join in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, every once in a while, can say you actually kind of still. <laughs> Well, you know, hey, my job is done. My job is done for sure. It's 2020, man. We got to open up, man. Uh, Ghost lives matter. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I, I, I saw this really great uh, thing about how, you know, we're back in the 20s. We should do what they did in the 1920s and stuff. And I thought, I, you know, I, no way people are going to do that. I wish they would. I wish people would be like they were back in the twenties. Well, Racist as fuck. Right, I know. Right. No, not that. <laughs> like, oh, wait. What? Okay, no. I I was talking about. I, I was actually talking about like. Uh, I, I know. I know. <sighs> that, that's the, well. That's exactly what I was thinking too. I was like, I don't know if I want to go back to the twenties. So I'm good. <laughs> well, I, 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 as the token white person on the panel here, uh, hey, you'll have to wait a minute. Me. Olaf is. I think wait, Olaf, Olaf is, white. is white though. No, not really. Not really. Oh, he's Olaf not. Olaf is not white. <laughs> Damn, she took your out. white card. She took your white card, Olaf. <laughs> uh, like in this episode, Olaf is now playing by the, a Mexican. Olaf was white <laughs> in 2019. Roll back some of those Mars and Venus segments. Olaf was a white then. Oh, that, oh, wait, was was Olaf on Mars and Venus? Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I mean, it's like I've been doing this for China? what, seven years now? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Olaf, man, he uh, he goes way back. Yeah, Olaf yeah. told everybody he is not white. If we did what people right? did in the 20s, 
What Let's do you mean? Hope that there was a major oh. stock market crashing to. Uh, oh yeah, bro. Hilarious. Okay. What do you mean? Okay. Let, what do you mean? Let, I'm let, white. Let's I ain't white. Let's see. I ain't white. Agree. <laughs> he ain't white, yo. I I, I told you. I told you. All right. All right. So I was talking about Great Gatsby stuff. God, people. Great Gatsby. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, like nice dress, uh, lovely events. I, I seen the old. The, I seen, yeah. the, I seen a the picture. Titanic. Sinking in the Titanic. Yeah, that that is so romantic. I seen a like, picture from like the thirties or something, and dude was like mowing his lawn in a full suit. Like he was like mowing the lawn. He had a he had a, like a, a three piece suit on, and he's mowing the lawn. I'm like, oh wow, that was man. They were suited and booted when they was mowing the lawn. <laughs> that was know. fancy. Yeah, man. They was like they was always suited up. Look, uh, we was talking about this the other day. If you look at the old days when people used to fly, people would like oh, be yeah. dressed up to go on a flight. Like it was they none of that. Be. It was none of that pajamas. I'm, a, you know, and all of that stuff. It was like people were wearing suits and and dresses and and then they, they were going to conduct a business immediately upon the boarding. And they was taking care of you. Like, did you see? Like, if you pull up those pictures, they was breaking you off with some real food. Like, they was bringing like a a big, you know, brisket. They bring it to you. Like, you want a slice? You know, like they was hooking you up on. Those if you breaking me off, we go together. <laughs> they break, oh, they break you off a brisket. Yeah, they was like back in the day. You know, they actually customer service was really good back in the day. You know, it was so on that, that next. So level. what happened? What do you think happened? Man, humanity. I, like customer humanity? service now. Wow, that's really yeah. Surprising. Customer service is whack now for most things. Like, you know, and then a lot of times they just straight up lie to you, like. Like, you know what I hate is when you sign up for, like, new cable or something. They You just got to know they're going to lie to you. They're going to be like, oh, man, yeah, oh, yeah, you get all the channels. You get this, it's $10 yeah. or whatever. And then when they come to install it, that's when you find out what it really is, what's really going on. But it's <clears> the <throat> culmination, Kente, of his poor training, um, lack of passion, people looking for a paycheck and not necessarily a career or – standing behind the company they are supposed to be believing in like right people don't have any loyalty to what they do and they're like man when do we get paid see uh, i was a manager for the four seasons for a long time and that is it, it's exactly the opposite right everything that you do is all based around exceptional customer service not just good customer service but like the guests need to leave the hotel talking about their experience and that's how I learned customer service. So it's so surprising yeah. when I see people out there that are just sort of like, eh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Hmm. Girl, they're not playing with you. They will show you that they do not care. You know, one thing I don't like is tipping before I get the service. Uh, when, I don't when like do that. Do that? When do you like do that? if you do some some of these apps where you order food, you put in the tip. Like, oh, yeah. Like, like I rather tip you when you when the food get here cash or something like that. Anyway, it's better for you anyway. Some places you go to, you go and then you order first, right? And then you pay first, right? I mean, I'm sorry, you pay yeah. first, and then they be talking about tip. I'm like, I ain't even got no service. <laughs> like I don't, yeah. I'm just not. Like if you give me great service, I'm a be- I'm your best friend. If the service is whack. You gonna hate me. Now does I, that I, apply I, I per- to does that apply to the bedroom? Wait, uh tip Do you in, tip the bedroom? in the bedroom? If you wow. give me good service. I've been doing this wrong. No, no, my no. Whole life. No, he said yeah. no, he said if you give me good service, you are my best friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. What was that second part? <laughs> if you don't You gonna hate me. You know what? You're right. There you go. That's why I said You're does right. that apply to the bedroom. You're right. <laughs> but you know what you can do though y'all see sports right where they have like the you know they have like the the play and then they have the little markers they can show you where you know the play went awry mm-hmm. you can do that in the bedroom just be like have a video and be like all right you know what we're gonna watch your, your performance don't <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna go oh, over man. it 
that you relationship's know. gonna last one night. It's gonna last forever, Jen. It's Don't the replay. Have hope, have hope. You know, <laughs> it, come on now. Isn't that wrong with a little instant replay? No. No. Instant <laughs> replay. But like, look, like I like that thing right there you're doing. That's good. Continue doing that. Now this part, erase that from your memory. Don't do that. <laughs> you know that part. There was a movie I just saw that um, on Amazon Prime. They were talking about we're gonna try this again, but this is what we're gonna change. And so they gave each other pointers, and then they tried it again. Oh, how did that work for them? <laughs> I don't know. I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, you fell asleep on the sex part, huh? <laughs> well, Shannon, that just speaks volumes. I mean, volumes. I mean, I, I, in all fairness, I was on my, like, my 20th hour of work. I, I, it was it was a wrap. Mm. Okay. Well, well, well. <laughs> uh, I was going to say about that... Okay. Sorry, uh, the uh, the tipping thing. Um, mm-hmm. I I prefer to tip first before I get my meal. Really? Because it's the it's the custom it's the custom of like it's custom for you to tip nowadays. So right. when people don't get the tip, you know they, or not that they don't get the tip, but like I just expect them to be because you know I usually order food from like Skip the Dishes or Uber Eats and. <laughs> Sometimes I forgot to tip and you see their face and you don't know what they're going to do to your food. So oh. I just, for my comfort, I just tip in advance because I just, not that I expect them to give me great service. I just expect them not to give me lower than the standard service. So well, spitting in my food or to be in my eating food. a French fry. Mm, yeah, because yeah, when you want don't to, tip, it has a negative effect. I don't want them to boo boo in my burger. Ew! <laughs> uh, <come on. laughs> Be like, no. man, I'm like, damn, McDonald's is really slacking. This burger tastes like shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What a great segue for what we about to get into. I'm oh, not eating nowhere else but home. Thank you. All right. I, so, I'm, I'm with you, Shannon. <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, this is like, that. you would think we had this plan, but I swear we didn't. And we're going to get to food and places we like to uh, eat. Yay! Now. Chick-fil-A, 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 Chick-fil-A. Uh, m- okay, Shannon is a foodie. For sure. I am. If she had a business card, one of her, you know, writer, <laughs> co host, foodie should be on there. It should. Um Jen is for sure a foodie. Oh yeah. I'm a foodie. I'm uh Ryan ain't a foodie. Ryan is a vegan foodie. I mean correction. <laughs> yes, he told you. No, Ryan is like Ryan eats like uh, grain and and uh, I, what were you saying? Oh yeah, I'm eating. A, um, he a, eats roti. I'm eating a grass taco or something. I was like, wait, something like that. It was like, what? No, he's like, oh, it's good. A grass taco. There was something like my that. My meals are the shit. Excuse my language, but my meals look. <laughs> I, I great. bet they are. And they you know are what? Aesthetically appealing. Real talk. My goal it's in 2020 so is to get Kipe. is to get to Ryan to where Ryan's at, right? It's disrespectful. I'm gonna be eating the grass tacos too. I'm gonna be like, mm, it's good. I don't care what y'all Even, say. Oh, disrespectful. But Olaf, I think he. I don't know if he's a foodie. Would you say you're a foodie? Olaf? I like food. I like food. I like to eat. Yeah, what, I mean, what makes a foodie? That's what he said. Okay. Say it again. Say it again. What, what I like to eat? eat. A foodie is like someone I likes who, to eat. You know what? I'm gonna go to that. I ain't gonna play around. I'm gonna go to that special place called Urban Dictionary. Because <laughs> you know they always right. <laughs> All right, Urban you Dictionary. You gonna go where? The Urban Dictionary. They always right. No, they're yeah, not. They're- a person who enjo- right. who enjoys eating food, unlike everyone else who hates food, think it's disgusting. What? Okay. What? No. Yeah, you want to you want to keep reading that? What they all be crazy? Okay, all of these are stupid. 
So there's a difference uh, between yeah. oh, wait, wait, there's wait. a difference between liking food and being both a connoisseur of enjoying food, its presentation and its taste, and creating look, food. Yeah, look, say look, it again, look, look, Jenna Jen. Look, the second the second one is foodie, a douchebag who likes food. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, God. Then the third one is a person who actually uh who has no actual interests or hobbies. <laughs> what? Uh, and then there's like this one long thing that I ain't going to read. Uh, okay. So I like, I like, we're going to go with you say this time. This is the one time urban dictionaries failed us. Um, so, you know, some people approach food, like it, you need it. It's sustenance. Uh, you know, you want to have something super healthy and just get the energy out of it. And then that's it. Right. And then there are other yeah. people who want to set the table with the forks and the knives in the right place and have mm -hmm. beautiful, so, uh, beautiful china to transfer where that's my thing um, that they, you know, they, they'll sit and cook a meal for two and a half hours because that's what you want. You want the experience out of it. And mm -hmm. that to me is what a foodie is. Not just somebody, because I'm not saying you have to also cook it, right? You can just be there for the presentation and enjoy that. But there's got to be something more than just, you know, getting calories out of what you eat and then moving on. Right. And, um, you know, um, we're going to do a, a, at some point, uh, I wasn't going to do it today, but I didn't have no time. So we're going to do our Food Wars uh, segment. But, as we were doing the food war segment and we were going through, uh, I mean, I was putting it together um, and it's the awards of the different, uh, we're going to do like a whole March madness, but it's going to be uh, restaurant chains and fast food chains. Okay. And as I was doing the research for it, you know, and I was trying to figure out which is going to be the number one seed. One of the one, number one seeds is McDonald's, right? It is the number one yeah. seed because of legacy more than anything legacy, right? And the thing about um, McDonald's is when we were kids, I think a lot of us loved McDonald's, right? Right? It was a place. Yeah, it was your kind of place. I, I mean, it was a place. Like, it was a treat, you know, no, that, to go that, to McDonald's. That was an advertising slogan. Too, oh, oh, okay. It was a treat to go to McDonald's for most kids, right? Until we, we, until we uh, learn better, you know. Yep. All right, then we stopped effing with McDonald's, right? Or maybe <laughs> some of us didn't. Because, you know, McDonald's, their their demographic is the real young or the real old. Like, you'll be seeing old people on dates. they would be like 85 on a McDonald's date. It's like, oh, look at that right there. <laughs> like, just as a side note, there was this older guy that was dating um, this woman in my church. And I would walk by McDonald's in my neighborhood, and I would always see them through the window and on their little McDonald's day, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, you know, they would always be there in the window. And I was like, oh, cool. And he was like a kind of a cat daddy type dude, you know, with the Cadillac and the, you know what I'm saying? And that, you know, had that vibe to him, right? So, uh, so I would always see, him. I thought that was so cool, right? And then one day I went in, the, I walked by McDonald's earlier than I normally did. And I looked through the window Brother man was on another McDonald's date with another chick. I was like, this old player is cheating on the lady from the church. Ain't that nothing. So that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of messed up, you know, how I saw it. But I was like, hey, and he didn't even take her to a new McDonald's. He just took her to the one that he, you know, I guess maybe he had them scheduled throughout the day, you know, where he would go into the um, McDonald's. He said McDonald's had the best toys in the kids meal. But this one thing that it made me think about when it comes to McDonald's. When I was a kid, I don't know if it's the same thing in Canada. I'm pretty sure it might have been. Ronald McDonald was like a thing. Oh, yeah. You would go to McDonald's sometimes, and Ronald would be hanging out. Some kids would have birthday parties. Ronald would be there. And then you would see, like, his homies. Like, remember Ronald had all these homies, like, the Hamburglar, yeah. Mayor Grimace, McCheese. Mayor McCheese, all of these guys. Grimace. And I'm like, what happened to Mitt Ronald? When's the last time y'all seen Ronald McDonald? Did he did he get caught up in Me Too? It's been a long time. Did he get caught up in Me Too? 
<laughs> I've seen I've seen Ronald recently. I've seen Ronald in reality recently. Really? What was it? Like uh, the, the Ronald McDonald. I got right? hired to be a brand ambassador for McDonald's, knowing full well I don't eat any of that. Right. But they had like the real Ron, the real Ronald McDonald leading the parade. But they hired here. me to pretend that I ate McDonald's to walk in. Oh wow! Wow, they got hired. Yeah, like oh, so so he was back on the scene. Well, when my I, kids were, yeah, he's still back on the team. Because I was going, team. he he shows up only for events. Like uh, like he only come out when you pay him. So you had to show up for events. You know, you, he got a what is it called? You know, when you hire somebody to come to the club real quick, he got one <laughs> of those. He got a, a cameo. He got a retainer. It's an appearance fee. A cameos. Yeah, a cameo appearance. Yeah, he's got an appearance fee. Cause I'm like, cause I was about to do a hashtag. What what the f happened to Ronald? You know, cause I was Ronald like, is old and social security ain't what it used to be. So um, he's not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he got a job at at McDonald's. You know, uh, you know, working in the kitchen or something. But yeah, I wonder like what what happened to Ronald. And then also when I was coming up, there were a, another thing that was a thing was. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese, like the kids having oh, their yeah. parties at Chuck E. Cheese. I don't really hear that no more. Do people do that still? My niece, my nephew just had his birthday there at Chuck E. Cheese. Okay, there's not okay. a lot of them left. Yep, they still do. Because yeah, I Chuck E. Cheese is a booming business. Yeah, it that's is. That's where my, that's is my like grandsons. I just like take my grandsons there for their birthdays. Yeah. I can't remember the last. See, time I grew I up on that. Showbiz. They showbiz, yeah, here, Showbiz yeah. Pizza. Yeah, I remember Showbiz. Yeah, but I don't know. I thought maybe Dave and Buster's or something took him out or something. Chuck E. Cheese mm-hmm. be packed. Oh shoot, Stephanie says Chuck E. Cheese be packed. I do. Okay, all right. Now, can I tell you something? Uh, we can say it because Chuck E. Cheese ain't sponsoring the show. <laughs> they they pizza was always whack to me. Um yeah, Godfather's had the best pizza growing up. Godfather's? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I've never had Godfather's pizza. You suck. I never had Godfather's pizza. Uh, oh, I'll, you suck. I'll give it a shot. We haven't, had, a shot. we haven't had Godfather's around here in 15, 20 years, probably. That's that Herman Cain We pizza. still have Godfather's in my hometown. Mm. Shout outs to Nebraska. Really? Oh, they said, oh, Stephanie said they upgraded their pizza. Okay, all right. You know what? I'm a I'm a walk up in the Chuck E. Cheese and be like, give me a slice. Let me see what this slice is like. Maybe we should do pizza around the country That's and a, do a little segment. Great idea. That's not fair. I live in Hawaii. Hawaii? They got Hawaiian pizza there. I mean, I could have sworn oh, no. that Hawaii was a part of the country. That's not. No, uh, yeah, it is, but we also have the worst pizza, so that's not really fair. No, you don't have the worst. I guarantee you. Oh, Stephanie oh, says. Oh, you sure? Stephanie says they got Pop, wine and Pop beer is. in in there as well. Oh, sure. I don't know about that. You know who got worse pizza than you, Jen? Who? The prison system. <laughs> <laughs> also, also shout out to school lunches. Uh, Kinte posted a. Uh, an old recipe for school lunch pizza, which was just hilarious. Yeah, that, that oh, is I'm funny. here for the old school pizzas. CC's pizza is the best. It's a buffet too. Anthony Davis says that, and <laughs> No Qatar has the worst pizza. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, Stephanie says CC pizza is kind of terrible. Hilarious. I, it I, is kind of terrible. I, I like the pizza that you like. You know, you're you're walking down someplace in Manhattan or Brooklyn, I guess too, and you just find a pizza place, and those are the best pizza places. They're I can't stand the big company pizzas. They're just I don't know. They're just gross. We're on Streamyard, by the way. Um. Okay. So it's like now Chicago's got some good pizza Giordano's up there has got really good pizza man Lou Malinati it's too thick I make my own pizza at home I'm with you alright so so Madeline our uh, dating expert (laughs) I'm not I am the worst person for that ever I was like you see I I got excited like let's talk about it 
<laughs> there yeah, is I wanted to talk about things. Thing. I mean, I am literally the worst at that. Uh, so you're not an expert at that? It says that on, in your bio. It says uh, stunt woman, actress, writer, producer, and uh, dating expert. Does it say dating expert? No, I just added that shit. I don't think it does say dating expert. <laughs> I know for a fact it doesn't. Uh, you should, so you let's should talk check about out. that dating expert. Can say. All right, so we can talk about it anyway, though. Yeah. Ooh. So, so Madeline, would you say that you are a? What kind of woman are you to date? Well, that's a big question. In the beginning. <clears throat> Wait, what? You're cutting out. <laughs> I said I said, what kind of woman are you to date? Are you difficult? Are you difficult? Are you real easy going? Are you you have high expectations? You want to go to the moon on the first date? Go to the moon? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, right? I didn't think about that, but I'm down for that. She says, so now I want I mean, pizza. I keep it 100. I usually, uh, I usually take it for a test drive, and if I like it, then I date it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did. It's usually like, if I want it, okay, off grip, I need to know if it's good. And if it's good, then I see about maybe we might go out and talk about it. Do you kick the tires a little bit and stuff? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if I can take you to the moon, but I can show you the moon. Hilarious. Uh she's you like better take me to the moon, Ola. <laughs> <laughs> See the only problem can, is if you I take I can her, show you a moon. <laughs> if you take her to the moon on the first date, then you gotta take her to Mars the next one. So you know. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting though. She says I go. Oh straight. yeah. I need to I need to make sure I need to test I need to test it out before I keep it. Oh wow. Try it before you buy. Try it before you buy it, right? That's what I was gonna. That that's that's a huge culture. That try it before you buy it. Hmm. Well, I mean, isn't that what dating is? I, I basically. Man, <laughs> what is dating? I, I don't know. I I don't know really. <laughs> I don't. I'm like I have no idea. I none. It's it, it it's some it's something that the young people talk about now. Well, you know what. Dating, they say dating in these days is trash. And people I, are trash. I agree to a certain hey, degree. Hey, people aren't trash. People are awesome. Just some people are trash. I agree. Most people are awesome. I don't know. I, I, I haven't reached that cynical part of my life yet, apparently. I'm still optimistic. Oh, I am not it. cynical, honey. No, oh, ma'am. I can't even spell cynical. Now, I speak truth. Uh, but really, you think you think like most people? Well, I shouldn't say most people. Do you, what do you base that off of? What What are you basing your uh, your lowered expectations of people on? Um. Well, I mean, we started it early with customer service. People are okay. trash. Well, okay, that's um, yeah. got a point. <laughs> Talking about taking no for an answer all the crime articles of people killing somebody because they didn't like them telling them no like people are trashed mm. now there are good humans but I'm talking about people <laughs> there's good humans he says uh, Anthony says I'd say 80% of people are superficial and self-centered hashtags just saying yes people I, I mean I do kind of agree with that but but I also think, I mean, people are redemptive. It, you, people have awesome sort of like long lifespans where all kinds of things change. Just having kids can change you, getting married changes you. So many things can change you that you, like, I feel like we shouldn't just lump people into. Oh, we evolve. We evolve, we grow, but we also evolve and grow into crazier people. Well, there's that. That is so true. Mm. So I, don't get me wrong. That's not a, I'm not categorizing a whole lot of people. I'm just saying that over time, it has become more commonplace for ridiculousness. And it's like, I see more and more of it. 
And it's like, do, but why though? Do, do, do you think that maybe it's the, uh, the, what you're talking about, the ridiculousness is sort of more acceptable. It's like, it's so mainstream to sort of like embrace that on some level that that's the problem that like, there's no, cause I hear people talk about uh, this idea that we don't have any social constraints on us anymore. And I, I keep, trying to sort of parse that and figure out what that's all about but it's tough. yeah i think it's probably a culmination of a lot of things jen you think um you know with the way that technology has grown it has decreased the authenticity of relationships and people actually having um conversations that's really that true. are genuine and effective and people's range of emotions is twofold it's either i'm happy or i'm angry and nothing in between yeah isn't um, that weird? it's it, it boggles my mind which you know everything is blamed on a mental illness um but there's no help or rehabilitation for any of these things that plague us so yeah i don't know i have hope for humanity but give me humanity people that's a whole nother can of, yeah. Do, do you think that some of it may be that uh, more and more people are being more uh, self-centered? Not, I, I don't want to say self-centered, but it's like, you know, there's, I, in other words, it has to be their way. Uh, in other words, I don't like, uh, I don't like, uh, uh, coca-cola so you can't drink coca-cola around me because i don't like it it's more they're more opinionated and more uh about what i like and not what you know not just accepting they're not as accepting it's like the whole thing i've always found just odd about uh since we just went through the holidays and i was uh saying merry christmas you know you get people get offended at that things like that it's you know stuff like that keeps coming up that you can't say merry christmas to somebody because it'll offend them the way i look at it is like if i'm one religion and you're another religion if i tell I've never you, seen any of that happen me i've either. never seen anybody say hey don't fucking say merry christmas to me i've, I've never, never seen any of that happen i've only heard people say it happens because well uh, it's like i i it's like i at some of the places that i go into has it ever uh, happened to you in real life yes wait a minute um madeline ain't no ain't no okay. do, ain't no do gun. ain't no no guy's gonna trip on you for saying happy merry christmas to him. <laughs> well <laughs> that's, I, that's just happen. an example but i mean you know where people are more, it's like nowadays people it's like everybody's easily offended i mean if you say you like cats and they like dogs and they're offended because you like cats yeah. I'm, I'm, I am. they're more opinionated and it's about my opinion not about your opinion and you know, I, I think that makes it tougher on everybody though in, in dating and everything because no absolutely i mean and that's even with work ethic i think olaf like i have gotten into this this conversation with people at work and they're like well i don't want to do that and i'm like wh who raised you what do you mean you don't want to do that you? so uh, right. you know can can i interject something because uh, i mean this is actually really fascinating to me from a lot of different levels one of them is uh, there's definitely a collective narcissism that i feel like this culture has right our entire society is sort of built up around uh, uh, uh that's, that's the only way i can describe it it's definitely a collective narcissism but i will also say this that collective narcissism really stems from us saying that individual liberty and individual freedoms and rights are more important than the group's rights and so right. in places like uh china yeah. and japan and and, and places where they value sort of the, the culture first and not the individual liberty first, right. you don't have the same thing. And the, the interesting thing to me is it's a huge trade-off because once you start to tell people that their individual liberties don't matter, then the, all of the progress that we've made over the past 50 or so years, even more, um, starts to erode. And then we end up kind of looking like what we were striving for was not like once we got it we didn't want it yeah perfect sense 
I got it. Mm. I'm following. Mm-hmm. It's tough. That's a tough one. It is. It is. It is. I love. You know what I love about this uh, first two hours is we can start off talking about 2019. We can go into go sex and then get in this real deep conversation about uh, expectations and whatnot. So um, it's important. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're expecting go sex, because those two things definitely tie. Right? Yeah. I mean, your expectations need to be on point because. <laughs> He's and dead. it's cheating. He's He's dead. Dead. There's a whole movie about a has sex with a ghost. It's not like consensual. It's like a ghost rapist. <laughs> and like I remember That's seeing awful. it as a kid, and it frightened the shit out of me. I was like, "Oh my god, Casper's a rapist!" Oh god! Like I just remember having so many nightmares. Oh, that's insane. Hey, Crystal, in the chat room. It is, uh, I think it's called like is the that my ghost, the enemy yep. within, or the hunted, or. Hmm? Dang man, that's 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 something though. When Casper, he's like he's trying to take it. Yeah, that's not good. How do you? But even... in the movie, it's all graphic. Like he tries to like grab her while she's driving. It's supposed to be a real story. This woman claims that she was um she was molested by a ghost, and it would molest her uh, in the car in her room. Uh, witnesses said that she like levitated while it happened. And I was like, man, uh, I've never had dick so good I've taken, but you know what? <laughs> I tried if that happens. I ain't afraid no goops. <laughs> <laughs> Many people man, say you would if be you can levitate, you well, the shit's gotta be good. Uh, the entity. Uh, Many people say, and I don't. Oh, it's, yeah, it's called The Entity. That's the name of the movie, The Entity. But, uh, thank you. Um, um, it says, okay, many people say, and I don't agree with them, but I am special and entitlements issues stem back to Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers, because of those uh, shows enforce the attitude. Well, I see, I disagree with that. I actually don't think that it's, that it's making individuals feel special that creates narcissism. That's really sort of, that, that's taking a little tiny thread and, you know, trying to weave an entire tapestry out of it. What, what I think actually has happened is we have moved in the direction of creating a, a kind of individual liberty as a way of life and that the collective good is no longer where our attention is focused. And that's not, that isn't something that you sort of, uh, because if that were true, then Gen Xers would be like that. And Gen Xers, are, they don't tend to be like that. What I think is sort of going on is we we have gotten to a point of individual freedoms that's just this is the price of it and what now what are we going to do how are we going to handle it from here because other countries have handled it and they go through all kinds of you know, stuff. Well, hmm. you can tell I'm not a sociologist. I just play one on the podcast. <laughs> Uh, you are the closest thing to sociologists on this podcast. I'm I'm just a wannabe, but it is really interesting. I mean, I, I actually really do find this fast. I'm here for it. Can't say what you eating because I'm hungry. Vegetarian spaghetti. All right. In, uh, why, why does your spaghetti have to be vegetarian? Like, uh, why can't you just have spaghetti? Like, what What's the point of saying that it doesn't have meat in it? Uh, I'm trying to stay away from meat as much as possible. No, 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 no. I, no, I mean, why are you staring? I was like, is pasta? I was like, yeah. I was like, isn't pasta already? Uh... He he's he's trying. He's going for the vegetarian vote. Leave him alone. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> don't it's like don't don't uh, don't rain on his parade. He's going for the vegetarian vote. I mean, you better sit down somewhere. You know what? Talking about voting, I don't know if you guys have been following the election. Um, from last night. Uh, I don't know if um, you know um, Ryan is in Canada, so I don't I don't, I don't know if he knows anything about these characters or whatever. All the people that are running on the Democratic ticket. Oh, that election. And um, I know who I'm voting for. Nobody. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna throw my name in there. I'm just gonna run for president. I think I can do it. I think I can do all right. You're gonna run. You're voting for nobody in your Keith Sweat voice. I I know who I'm voting for, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm voting for this person. I'm voting for Andrew Yang. Do you guys know who Basic Andrew Yang is? Income? For Basic Universal <laughs> Income. Yes. Do you guys know Andrew Yang? Yep. Sure. And the reason why I'm voting for Andrew Yang. Yang Yang? You're the Yang Yang now? You <laughs> Yang Yang? Uh, well, wait, I think once I t- tell you why I'm voting for him, it'll make a lot of sense. It ain't because of the, the, I mean, the giving out the thousand dollars a month, that's cool, whatever. But that's uh-huh. not it. That's not it. When he was talking about his uh, platform, and one of the uh-huh. things he said he was going to do was remove the stickers off the fruit. He got my vote. He that he got my vote. I've been saying that for so long. I hate the stickers on the fruit. When you when you're at the produce section, it's freaking horrible. I already know uh, because my first job was at a grocery store that bananas, non organic, are four zero one one. See. So uh, he got my vote. He got my vote. He's taking the stickers off the fruit. If that's the only thing he gets accomplished in his four years, I'm good. Well, well, how are we supposed to know what fruits what if they take the stickers off of it? <laughs> well, Come on, that, I mean, you know, we, we can't tell what the hell the fruit is if it ain't got the damn sticker on it. I mean, the people bringing it up, they're like, "Well, what is this?" I'm like, "Really? You, you work don't know here, this you don't is know a honey crisp? Oh wait, you don't know this is a honey crisp? Well, it's a gala." <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. Ring me up for a gala. I'm like, you don't know that these are organic cotton candy grapes. Well, these are just green grapes, and they're on sale for a dollar ninety nine a pound. Thank you. See, okay, uh-huh. that's okay. legit. That is totally legit. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, man, Andrew <clears throat> Yang. I'm I'm for him. It, get them stickers on. I, I have to tell the lady at the supermarket the other day what chives were. Uh, I mean, no kidding. I think she thought that I was just buying grass or something. It was so funny. That's you don't unfortunate. Know what chives are wow. That's unfortunate. But you know what? That just goes to show you the culture of what people eat and what they are, especially at a store where we started out in produce. We that was our first day of training. We had mm-hmm. to walk through produce and identify every single thing. Wow. Like that's, that's an eggplant. That's called customer service at its finest. That's an eggplant, y'all. That's yes. Eggplant. Well, people know an eggplant because of the leaf. emoji. Uh, well, you see, that, that's an emoji. That, that's an emoji, so people can cheat a little bit. I mean, Facebook said you cannot use that emoji for your. <laughs> 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 You're not allowed to use that emoji anymore. <laughs> not for that. Not for that. Well, then they need to make a penis emoji. Then, so how am I going to tell people that I want a penis if I don't have the eggplant emoji? Wait a minute. What if I you... need a penis emoji now. They're what? fucking up. They what need if... to give me a new emoji now. What if you What if you want to tell your wife to pick up a a, a couple of eggplants at the? That's different. <laughs> at the you, store. If you tell her to pick up a couple of eggplants. You can't write it Make out. Make sure you put That's... a store emoji next to it. Oh, so okay. she might go to the grocery store or she might stop by the bar. It'd be funny if she cheats on you. Be like, you said get some eggplants. <laughs> you said get some pizza. Terrible. No, I was saying get <laughs> eggplants. Really oh, I thought awful. that was a license to cheat. <laughs> hey, you better get in where you fit in. Eggplants for everyone. Hey, I'd like, now, last time I bought an eggplant at the grocery store, I, I took it back. I figured it was false advertising. I brought it home, put it in, uh, put it in the ground, tried to grow. It didn't grow one damn egg. <laughs> but <Ba-dum-bum. laughs> <laughs> I got you even giggling. <laughs> Cause nobody else is like following. I'm like, I'm here for it. Wow, hilarious! You know, okay, so legit, seriously. There are some, especially here in Hawaii, where we have, let's just say, uh, a, a real varied group of uh, people. Well, many groups. We have people that come from Samoa. We have people that come from 
Tonga. We have people that come from Micronesia. We have people from Samoans, though. Whew, they're all over. Uh, everything. Okay. <clears throat> Philippines is a big one. So is Japan. Our experience from a culinary point of view is so diverse that I'm not saying that, like, you should know everything in the supermarket that, you know, is some stuff you should yeah, everybody should know what chives are but there are really some foods that are in produce that i can't identify i don't know what they are because they're not native to here so i'm, I'm, I'm just saying there, there might be some reasons why you don't know every single thing ma'am listen can we get back to them samoans though yeah, you want to go back to those samoans <laughs> I'm here for you. Let's not. <laughs> so what, 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 mean, what you're saying, James? I, it's, it is, uh, no, no time out. It is um, the season of Girl Scout cookies and Samoans are bomb. So I'm going to need you to sit down mm. and chill out. <clears throat> now, no, uh, Jen, by that, right. by that statement, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you've never dated any fruits then, huh? Um, I mean, not in the literal sense. Perhaps in the figurative sense. Some fruit cups. Did I? Did I? Uh, this is my favorite. It's really one of my only, but it's also one of my favorite stories about dating somebody that like I didn't know anything about. We just got set up on a date, and I could tell from the moment that we sat down at the the restaurant that it was going to be a difficult date. I, I we started out talking about literature, right? And um, don't get me wrong, the guy was definitely, he was very, very attractive, super awesomely attractive. And so we started talking about literature and, you know, at first I thought, oh, maybe this is going to be okay. You know, the guy seems to know a little bit about some stuff and whatever. And I said, so what's your favorite Shakespeare play? And I said Shakespeare play. And he said to me, point blank, with like deadpan expression, I don't like foreign food. And I, I just... Wow. Yeah. Didn't even know what to say. I don't like foreign food, too. What's your favorite Shakespeare play? Uh, <sighs> okay. Well, well, he is a, a foreigner. Uh, I, I, I mean, part of me thought maybe he just wanted to end the date early, so... Yeah. That's what I thought. Wow. You should have held on to him tightly. Mm. Yep. You sure should have, like, around his neck. <sighs> Aw. You know what? You know what? You, <laughs> you could be the reason why he knows about Shakespeare now. You could have been the reason he knew about Jesus. <laughs> Perspective. <laughs> oh my God. It was so bad, I had to go to church the next day. But See? I got- listen. Listen. Mm-hmm. Would you Would you take a, a guy to church? On a first date, Shannon. On a first date. Yeah, I I, I go I to an Episcopal Shannon. church. I see Shannon uh, doing that. That's something Shannon would do. What? I'm not. I'm not even gonna entertain you right now because <laughs> you wanted 2020 on some ignorant stuff. But okay. <laughs> Be like, you gotta come to my church. Um. Yeah, the naked church. The naked it, church. That, that's a church. That is a church. That is. Yeah. Right yeah. next to Bedside Baptist. Bedside Baptist. What's up, comedian Jay Scott? <laughs> the naked church. It's sacred, so. Yeah. Hillsong, Heathens, yep, all of that. <laughs> would you Would you go to the naked church, uh, Madeline? Of course. Yeah, I knew it too. That's a no-brainer. I'm good. That's what I do these sit-ups for. Yeah. But the problem isn't the nudity. The problem is I'm an atheist. Uh-oh. I don't know what I do there. Wow, that would be a problem. Well, you could just light candles and pretend. Yeah, like the nudity is not a problem. But I'd be like, go, yeah, guys, you you pray to that dude. You pray to that. <laughs> like, what am I gonna do? Cheerlead? I was saying. I was saying to. Um, I told Madeline the other day that because uh, she does a lot of stuff in the nude. I said I've seen your ass way more than I've seen my own, so <laughs> because you you constantly are doing you did this one thing it was like 
naked uh, ghost hunt, uh, haunted house or something. What was that? Where you was in a haunted house and you was naked and you was wa- going through and yeah. What was that? About? Yeah. Yeah, I did a I I did a naked ghost hunting. So for me, I'm just like, huh, living in a house where there's a ghost versus being naked ghost hunting. Like I think I can handle it. Mm, that's funny. We gonna yeah, be on the naked ghost day hunting day, show. Huh? huh? We gonna be on ghost all day today, huh? Nah, nah, nah. This is the ghost hour. Well, I, the witching listen, hour. Listen, I, I see. Kinte just set me up perfectly. I tried with every ounce of my energy to convince him that we should just talk about the Witcher for 24 hours, but he totally was against that. I just don't uh, know why. Well, I haven't seen it yet, so, uh, so when I get that in, when I get it in, we're going to get it in. So, um, when you get it in? Wait a minute, pause. pause we're going to get it in? Pause. I, yeah. Th- we <laughs> now interrupt this programming. I know. We're only or an hour into the podcast. She about, to, she about to report me to HR. I was like, we 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 need to interrupt this programming for a special bulletin. <laughs> yeah, HR HR is getting a call after this show. Can't say can't say clearly has a hard time getting it in. So <laughs> we are going to uh, go ahead and cue in our special ads. Hilarious. Oh my God! The HR department is going nuts about right now. Yes. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I, it, it's okay, Kente. We we totally. I mean, Olaf said about an hour ago he liked to eat, and I was like, "Say it again." What? Just <laughs> hilarious. Said I like to eat. I mean, that's what he said. I'm here for it. Mm. I'm glad you you're here for it. I well, should not have shared this to my Facebook. They're going to be like, what is Shannon doing? Mm. <laughs> it's past my bedtime, everyone. What's and I am unwholesome after, after hours. Let's just go ahead and keep that one real. What's, okay, your, bed, what's your bedtime? What? What is your bedtime? My bedtime uh, in a real world, uh, I would like to be in the bed by 8.30 or 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. But I'm usually at work at this hour until 7 a.m. So if I had it my way, yeah, I'd be in the bed by 9. Oh, wow. This is this is about normally when I start to kind of almost maybe get a little tired. <laughs> this is like REM sleep number 2,829 at 132 a.m. I'm like in dreamland. Mm. Oh, no. I, it, it's only eight twenty here. Oh, I'm sorry, eight thirty. It's eight thirty. Don't don't rub that it's in. Still early. Don't it, don't rub that in. Well, it's, <laughs> it's a Shannon and I are on the same time. There's one thirty, one thirty, uh, one thirty two for me also. So I normally don't go to bed till about four or five in the morning anyway. Mm. See, the last four days I worked overnight, and I'm just like, mm, I could be in the bed right now, guys. Mm. But you're yeah. not. You are. I am in the bed, us. actually. I am in you're... the bed, but I'm just not in the bed. We are so appreciative that you have chosen to spend your time with. Oh, I'm totally in the bed. Check it out. I am in the bed. There's blankets all of it. I'm in the bed. That's why I said I'm totally in the yeah. bed. I'm just not in the bed. I Thanks. actually had to put on a bra for this. You know what? I feel weird trying to do a podcast from the bed. Wait, you put a bra on for this? I definitely did not. Madeline, I can't be on camera I, without a bra. I left, I left mine, I left mine off. I didn't, I, just, I didn't give a damn anymore. I, I don't have to wear my bra no more. Yeah, what? like I keep the fucking sit back and sit <laughs> up because yeah. these uh are they got their own zip code. I had to put a bra on. Yeah, and you and you and you uh, stingy with them too. Excuse me, what? You stingy with them too. They are mine. Oh, wow. Do we have to revisit that conversation again? (laughs) I mean, we could have whatever conversation you like. They belong to me. We, I asked her a question. I said, if, uh, her, her good friend who was on his deathbed, he would die. I said, if, if, if his dying wish now she's single, so she don't have a man. His dying wish was just one motor. It's not the point, one, but one motor. That is not the point, Madeline. Not the. Thank you. One motorboat. Motor. One motorboat before he died. 
not the And she no. said no. She would let her good friend die. All he wanted was a motorboat. This is why the Me Too movement was too. so prevalent in 2019. Like, oh. Madeline, you would be like that. He's dying. Uh, uh, and yeah. What that mean? You gotta, hey, you gotta, you gotta I mean, the guy. Some hoes thirst. Some hoes they thirst. You know. I mean, it's like it ain't like nothing's gonna lead to it. Hey. You know? it's just a little private motorboat. No. No. I um yeah. Mm. Like, nah. Dang, y'all are cold. It is what it is, homie. Y'all are cold. Would right. you like me to pray with you? Uh, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> that's about, that's that's about all you're going to get on your <laughs> deathbed. <laughs> it's a prayer. I mean, that's all you're going to get. Oh, man. See, that's that's wrong. Hey, there, you get one of those. Maybe you can I have mean, like a little toy boat. How about instead of a motor boat? I give I you a little toy part. boat, like one of them uh, Fisher Price deals. Uh, I mean, that part. But it's like, don't ask me to give parts of me to you just because you're on your deathbed. Just because I'll you're be on your like, deathbed. Let me, let, me plump, let me plump up your pillows. That's what? about all you're going to get. You act like it's a small thing being on your deathbed. I'm about to check on out of you. you. And you act like me putting my boots in somebody's face is a small thing. Uh, also, to, also if you're on your so. deathbed and that's what you're thinking about, you needed better life priorities. Oh. Yeah, you, you need to just go on and die. Cause, uh... <laughs> I mean, let's put, let's be honest though. If it was a rock, then we would debate that subject. It wouldn't be as like, right. no. If it was who? The if rock. it was a rock, then okay. You know what? You gotta do what you gotta no, do. Ma'am. You know, no, ma'am. Man is dying. No, but ma'am. This ain't the rock. I'm no, joking. ma'am. Gonna... But see, my boobs are not, they they aren't like my shining glory to me. Like, I, I'm i glad that men like them. Put them on a the shrine. Trust me, if I can figure out how to dislocate them from my body without surgery or pain, you could have them. Encase them in gold and put them on your mantle. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? It's like, you, it's like yeah. If you can do that, you can say, like, here, you can take them, you can play with them all you like, want. I don't care. I'm like, <laughs> But as long as they attach to this body, I get to make the decisions about them. No, so no, that that would be a good decision. You help out a, a a dying friend. And the answer is still no. I don't know if that'd be a good decision. No, that wouldn't be a good decision. That'd be that'd be. A... Yeah, and then look, no. look, look when he die, he had that smile on his face, and you'll know it'll you'll know why. So let me bring him to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ instead of putting him in my titties. <laughs> like, mm. he not about to get no good afterlife moments from these boobs like ugh, get back Jack I'm with you I'm totally with you you might be underestimating the powers of your boobs <laughs> um, well I mean they give nourishment to babies but I don't think they're going to bring the dead back to life dang that'd so. be interesting if, if that could happen be like, like grandpa, he's about to check on out. We need you to quick get him, bring him back. <laughs> bring grandpa back. That's disgusting. I am uh, dis- that is I disgusting. Need- That's beautiful. Can we change the subject? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm with you. Let's, uh, let's this, this, this commercial is brought to you in part by, yeah, Fiji. this is over. V- Fiji. Um, oh man, and the- Chiquita Bananas. Without stickers. Without stickers. Yearly sponsor. Without stickers. And Frito Lay sunflower seeds. Okay. We... Oh, those are my favorite. I love those. They are mine too, honey boo boo. Yep. Mm. Shout out to Plano, Texas. Y'all did something good. Y'all yeah. really did something good. Mm. Listen, uh, Ryan, you're super, super, super quiet. I know, yeah, Ryan. Because uh, Ryan was of... offended. I'm just listening. Uh, Ryan kind of was offended worried. by not being in the foodie category. You're kind of worried. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, I'm an introvert by nature, so I usually listen more than I talk. But when I talk, I come on live and I do my, my chatting. But majority of the time, I'm very quiet. But he talks about things he's passionate about. Like, get him yeah. to talk about relationships that don't work. 
get him to talk about branding. No, he doesn't have a relationship. About, that's what I'm saying. You will talk about them that don't work and be like, you know, people are. Yeah, I've listened to a couple of those conversations you've had on here. They're pretty informative. So let's so, hear it right. Yeah, let's lay some wisdom on us. What do you got? I don't have. Well, I don't know what we're talking about. All right. You, this is your moment for your platform. You tell us. What do you mean? This is, this is the Whatever. moment for you to shine. Ryan, what's your this what's your message for 2020? What's your message for 2020? Yeah. Tell take, us, take it Okay, I hit a before I got on. What I'm is the message for 2020? Yeah, tell us, Ryan. Let's um, get all ready, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think the message for 2020 is um, actually I got a message for 2020. Don't set resolutions because they never, no one ever completes them. Break, you know, do a daily um, affirmation. Like do something daily. Because like I've been on this uh, 365 day positivity thing, so I haven't posted anything negative or said anything negative on my social media at all, and I count it. So for 365 days, I just count every day that I don't post something, and it works because it's actionable. It's not an overall big goal. It's just on a daily basis. I don't uh, on a daily basis. I do one thing, and that's it. As opposed to one thing something bigger. every day, one thing. Well, it's not one thing, but I mean, in a sense, like just posting positivity every day. I mean, I didn't say I, I want to be a more positive person. No, for sure. Oh, go ahead. No, that's yeah. what I'm saying. One thing every day it can help build momentum. So I'm here for that. Yeah. So that's my message for 2020. It's day 18 for me, and the positive thing, and it's actually worked. I got more followers on that um you know i feel more protected because i'm not divulging a lot of my personal opinions about a lot of things but i still like use other platforms to talk about what i'm passionate about it's just that i'm just not doing on my personal work i don't know who's like i don't know what the audience who i'm talking to so i'm just keeping all the things that i know that's going to offend people off and just you know kind of zone in to like stuff like this where we could actually be specific because like Meghan Markle and uh, like I can't comment on that on my personal page because I got opinions yeah. about the whole Prince Harry and, and, and Meghan Markle thing. Well, and see, I'm the opposite. Running my mouth made me has made me super popular. I say whatever the hell I want. That part. <laughs> All right. I've been like, saying we're both, uh, everything we're, we're that I want. We're vegan, though, but I think we're very opposite. I'm very much an extrovert. I talk shit about everybody and anything. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I don't understand why 900,000 people follow me when I just talk mad shit all the time. How many people follow you? 900,000 on all the social medias? All put I'm together? here for that. Yeah, I am here for but that. But I just say whatever the hell I want. I talk about Meghan Markle. I talk about people. Uh, I get in trouble a lot. I get you in trouble a people, lot. You talk about people, mama? I mean, it depends on who their mama is. Okay. Now, if we having a burn off, then I'm going to talk about everybody's mama because, you know, I need to win that. See? We need to burn mama. some people. You know, I'm from the hood. We talk about people's mama all day. See, see, can't tell you remember two um, stream yard tests ago when I said everybody mama can get it. That's why Madeline is my people. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. <laughs> yep. People. I got it. I got it on a lock all day. I got it. I got it like it, it's here all the time. I was like, you ready to go? Let's do this. Your mama's so fat. No, I'm joking. <laughs> How fat is she? Man, my son. Your, your mom is so stank. Well, you know what? It's one of those things where uh, I was, like, I lived in the hood, but my mom made us parochial school. So I would have to walk through the hood in my parochial school outfit 
Bow to my like nice little school, come back, and then everybody in the hood had some shit to say to me. So I had to get real good at uh tearing at, at tearing people up. Yeah. I get real yeah. I had to get real good at them comebacks. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the thing when I was coming up snapping. Man, we was we was on it. The dozen? Yeah. He was on it. The so, dozens will make you fight people. The dozens will make you swing on somebody. Yeah. They will. Yeah, or snapping sure. on people? Yeah, yeah. I've never had to swing on anybody, but I've definitely had to avoid some swings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. I'll make you want to fight me. I'll say all kinds of shit. Oh. That's why I can fight now. Yeah. Do you do any martial arts? I do. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, what do I do? I mean, it's like, where do we start? Cause, uh, uh, I've done Krav Maga. I've done long style, uh, regular karate, and judo. But okay. I'm not very good at judo, but I'm good at kickboxing and regular boxing. Oh, wow. uh, anybody else does martial arts? I'm good at putting things in boxes. I used to. I used to do martial arts. And I did win a couple of tournaments, oh, yeah. but I don't do it anymore. I practice I practice martial arts in my day to day life, though. Mm. In a more of the mental ability, um, and I think I'm a black belt in that. I don't like cause the whole thing about martial arts is is like fighting without fighting. You know, mm-hmm. It's just being able to. It's about anticipating conflict and then avoiding it. So my sensei would always say that the best block is not to be there, not to put yourself in a situation where you got to fight. And when I did this positive movement in January, it all clicked. All of his principles that he would tell me over the years, because I've known him for 20 years, all the principles just started clicking. I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. He's like, you got to be positive. You got to be positive. I'm like, why? Because you know what? Being positive protects you. Because when people know your inner thoughts, then they know what type of move to make on you, you know, because they know what you're talking about. So when you keep your comments to yourself on certain matters and certain things, it's it's a stealth. So, you know, because the last thing you want to do in martial arts is fight somebody. That's the last thing you want to do. You want to try to come as much as you can with peace. And um, but if people put pin you up in a corner, then you whip it out. But you cannot. Let Wait them know that you know rewind. how to fight. Wait a rewind. If people pick you up in the corner, you <laughs> whip it out. Wait, what is that? The art of what's that? Dick pie? Pause. 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 <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> whip it no, but, you know when you get pinned in the corner, then you. F- like I teach my son, it's like if you know, try to run away as much as you can. But if people pin you up in a corner beat their ass and um and then try to find a a safe a safe space but like you know i realized just by being positive like people just don't know what i think and it's good because like i'm watching but just don't say anything so Mm -hmm. it's um you know it's the best form of of protecting yourself is just not letting your enemy know what move you're gonna make and when you keep them guessing. Mm. I so yeah. I, I practice martial arts every day. Oh, and the other thing too with martial arts is um, practice, 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 repetition, repetition, repetition. That was a uh, principle that my sensei taught me 20 years ago. And that's how like I'm able to do a lot of different things because I keep on practicing. I get, I practice so I, be, you know, I practice the basics so I can become a master. And those are like little principles that, you know, really put you. And again, when you keep on practicing, it's a form, it's a form of defense. The more confident you are at anything you do. Hmm. Damn, that's deep. Black nerd swag. Uh, uh. Oh, yeah. okay. shout out to Lauren. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lauren, she's going to be on a little later. Uh, if she ain't falling asleep, <laughs> but uh, no, that's gonna be cool. 
Um, I want to fall asleep. Can we have? A, we should have an hour of a sleep uh, podcast. You know what? Uh, if so, some I mean, reason so, something don't come together, I it might like, be though. It might be one. That? Can we include that next year? Like we could play meditative music and we could do some deep breathing for like the first fifteen minutes, and like the last forty five, we could be asleep. That's a great idea. <laughs> You're welcome. And then you could have, and then you could have a contest. that's like who snores the loudest. There, there, look, there. You have it. Shannon wins the end of this podcast. That's right. When you click on a on a podcast and one of the hosts look like your child's mother. What? <laughs> what? GT Massive. I guess one of you guys look like his uh, child's mom. Madeline. Oh. So. Huh. It's either man. Hey, what? Uh, this guy okay, GT well, Mass. Now we gotta know who it is. Yeah, which one looks like your child's hey, what? mother? Don't, what? don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy. Which one looks like your mother? Child's mother. Child's mother. Wait, I wait. I'm wait. I'm on the wrong page. Am I seeing this? Child mother. No, this guy GT Massive uh, says. When you click on a podcast and one of the hosts look like your child's mother. Oh. So it's either. Well, Shannon it or clearly Madeline. can't be the three guys, because if it is, we got questions. Well, not just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, G G T. Ain't me. Uh, that might be. There's some people nice smile, some people look like my me. Lower right. Ain't me though. No, he's talking about you. It's you, Madeline. Okay. <laughs> There's some other hoes around that look like me, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Man, I need him to come to work for me. If I mean, it's me, clearly it's I'm not right. me, because I do not do the baby mama thing, huh? If they look like me, I need him to come to work for me next week so I can stay in my bed. So, um, mm -hmm. one thing I, I want to do at the end of these, uh, at some of these, if we get time and we can do it with this one, is what have we learned? So, I'm gonna start off with you, Jen. What have we learned in these in this two hour block? Uh, that y'all have sides to you that I didn't know existed. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, don't act like that. Hilarious. Hey, listen, I can be holier than thou because I didn't say that much. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, wow, okay. <laughs> right, right. I'm like, you say oh. so. <laughs> um, you guys know that I'm just here for comic relief anyway, right? That's okay. <laughs> Look, the, the commentary to Jen's commentary is sponsored by Baker's Candy. Green <laughs> Uh -huh. Wait a minute! I asked for the sunflower. Okay, so what about uh, what about you, Shannon? What did you learn? I learned that we spend way too much time worried about having sex with ghosts, and not enough time being in relationships with real people. You know, ghosts were real people at one point. Um, yeah, but if you still consumed with doing them instead of being in a relationship with somebody you can actually touch and see, I got questions. How many guys can make you levitate, though? I mean, I need more than one. <laughs> so they can both pick you up. That's how the levitation. All right. So I'm going to tell you uh, what I learned. I learned that Ronald McDonald is still doing his thing. He's out there. <laughs> yeah, I, he's still doing his thing. All right. I learned that y'all will do anything for a, for a good deal on some property. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I've also learned that that um, when it comes to 2020, we're just gonna take over the world. So when it comes to 2020, you better not forget Shannon's birthday. You know what? You know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do like um, Back to the Future. I'm gonna I'm gonna have it already. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the uh, what was it? A UPS guy. And I have it already sent now. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. So ghosts and time travel all in one podcast. 
Uh -huh. All right. So uh, let's say, uh, let me start off with you, Madeline. How can we get you in social media? Uh, you can look up Queen Kong Kai or uh, Madeline Fleming or Madeline Carita Fleming. I'm easy to find on social media. I'm super easy to find. All right. And what about you, Ryan? So Queen Kong Kai on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, MySpace, uh, in all of the social medias. All right. Ryan, go ahead. You can find me at Ryan Savant underscore on instagram or uh brand savant on facebook or you can find me um at hustle zone on instagram or hustle zone tv on instagram olaf all right both at creative with a k well you can find me mostly in my recliner but on uh, social right. media <laughs> social media you can find me on facebook at olaf barbosa I also have a, uh, it's like a Twitter, Olaf Barbosa there. Don't use that much, but yeah, I'm on Facebook. All right. Um, Shannon. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Shannon Ford, like the president, type in Jefferson, like the president. All right. And now Jen. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at following this one. <clears throat> you can find me on Facebook that kind of stuff the same and you can see my website at moviesbakingmail.com and critical laughstock all right so do you guys just hold on we're gonna uh be right back with uh our next uh hour number three you guys have a good one bye